Welcome back, everybody, to the Nosebleed Sports Podcast. I'm Chris Witt. With me, as always, is Mr. Adam Schmidt. Adam, how are you today? Ooh, so good. So good. I'll tell you what, I'm doing so good, too. And you know why? Why? Because today (laughs) we have on with us, back again for the NFL season, the uh, contributor to LockedOnBangles.com. You've heard him on 700 WLW. Uh, group member, founding group member of Debonair at Andre Edwards 06. Andre Edwards, how are you today, sir? I'm quite fantastic, fellas. How about yourself? Uh, excellent. If I was any better, I'd be you, buddy. <laughs> Man, that's what I'm talking about. I know it. I know it. It's been since like January, maybe? Is that how long it's yeah, been? Yeah, back, back, back when uh, football was still, I don't know. I mean, I guess you can consider it re- relevant, but the Bengals season was long over by then anyway, right? <laughs> yes. The Bengals was, season was definitely long over by that then. That was when we were reviewing the disappointing 2018 season. <laughs> D- disappointing, but still rather expected, right? Sure, yeah. I feel – I mean, except for the fact that I thought they were going to go <laughs> – Yeah. What was it? I was it like 11 I... and – no, yeah, 11 and 5, I believe. Is was what that what it was? Oh, I yeah, thought I, yeah. I'm quite confident it was 11 and 5. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm I'm still pretty confident in yeah, this I team. Ex- I expect you to say the same thing this year, Chris. <laughs> <laughs> uh, all right, so while we're on it, it's a new season. This Bengals team uh, has endured a new coach. We uh, we've got uh, we've got some injuries, we've got retirements, we've got all kinds of stuff. Uh, so let's, wh- wh- where do you want to get started today? Let's start with the new coach. Let's Hashtag start with this new coach. day, baby. Hashtag <laughs> new day. Yeah. Tell me, tell me your, uh, Andre Edwards thoughts on the new coach. Um, first and foremost, let's start with, it's now Marvin, right? Exactly. <laughs> um, wow. Just. I think there's a there's an air of uh, or a feeling of wow this is just refreshing. Uh, Sixteen years of uncomfortable jokes. mediocrity. It, yeah, I mean you know just, not only that but like just 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 the air about Marvin like there was there was just an air of arrogance. Um, there was an air of uh, distance from not only the fan base but the media itself um just kind of like you people don't matter you're kind of an inconvenience to me i really don't know why i have to do this you don't need to know this information um you know so so to go from that to zach taylor who you know seems seems to be at least year one uh you know six months in or so of of him it seems to be uh, an air of transparency, mm-hmm. a, a a level of exchange with the media and with the fans that says, hey, we're going to be open. We're going to be honest. We're going to be straightforward. Um, and I don't know. I don't necessarily expect all of that content to continue throughout the season because there's some gamesmanship about injuries and, and things of that nature. But to 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 have him flat out come out and say, hey, this is what's going on. And this is what's happening with this team is it's really nice, man, just to be able to understand what's happening and what's going on with the, with the squad. Yeah, and speaking of that, it, it's already with the offensive line. We talked about the offensive line a lot last year, how they were one of the worst in the league, and uh, there was a lot. They left a lot to be desired. So um, they drafted Jonah Williams, which I was very excited about. I thought, okay, even though he's a rookie, he's probably going to be – he might be the best offensive lineman on this team. Um but then he gets hurt. He he has the torn labrum. He has surgery out for the season. Clint Bowling retired. So you have you had to shuffle some stuff around. He uh, Michael Jordan, who is I, I he's going to be my favorite Bengal automatically. And I was just thinking about this today. He's a six six guard named Michael Jordan. <laughs> and I'm so excited about that. <laughs> Ten year old Adam and thirty seven year old Adam are equally excited about Michael Jordan, a six six guard being on the Bengals. Um Absolutely. <laughs> so so you have him and, and Trey Hopkins is gonna be the center, which means Billy Price, last year's first round pick, is starting on the bench. Kind of a big that was kind of a big news piece uh in the last week or so. Yeah, absolutely. I think 
to me, this really truly drives home uh, what Zach Taylor is all about. Yeah. Like it's it's one thing to give lip service of hey, everybody is competing for a job. There's no incumbents. You know, everybody has an equal shot. Well, sure. And I I think that was the mantra under under Marvin for the last 16 years of hey yeah everybody's equal and doesn't matter how you got here. One of Marvin's favorite lines was like. It doesn't matter how you got here. It's about what you do when you get here. Yeah. Except for the fact that <laughs> every draft pick was held in higher esteem than any, you know, any undrafted free agent. Except for the fact that, you know, your first and second round picks got three, four, five, six shots at making the team when other cats were clearly better than they were, or, or at least – should have been given an extra look, and they weren't. Cedric O'Bahey, right? <laughs> but but to watch, well, but but to watch, you know, a guy like Damian Willis be declared the starter, the opening day starter, as an undrafted rookie free agent wide receiver, you mm-hmm. know, over a Cody Core, over a Josh Malone, that says a lot, man. Josh Malone may not make this team. He might not. And that's real. I mean, that that is real. Yeah. Um, it, to to watch a Trey Hopkins have you know Billy Price looking you know up at him, that's huge. Uh, to, it makes everybody like, feel like they have a chance. Well, and it breeds competition, right. which is ultimately what you're looking for. Right. Look, man. Most of these cats have been playing football since they were three, four, five, six years old. They've dedicated their entire lives to it. They were the best person in their high school. They were probably one of, if not the best person in in college. And now you run into the NFL and you're going to tell me that just because, you know, some scouts overlook me or because I didn't say quite the right thing in my interview, that I'm not going to have the same shy as a dude standing next to me. Although every single time we step on the field together, I'm better than that dude. Mm -hmm. Like, that just lends itself to guys being like, I, I'm not going to give my best because I know I'm not going to get a shot. And with Zach Taylor coming in, with with him dropping the philosophy that he has and then proving it by saying, here's three dudes who, under Marvin, there's no way in hell those three dudes would have had a shot. No. It just wouldn't. It just wouldn't happen. Yeah, you mentioned Damian Willis, the undrafted free agent, getting a start in A.J. Green's absence. Um, so, you know, A.J. Green, I think, was it the first day of training camp with the so ankle? Like the first 45 minutes of training camp. <laughs> yeah, first 45 minutes. Didn't, uh, didn't waste any time. So, from what I understand, is it week three best case scenario, A.J. Green's back? Is that what I'm hearing? Yeah, I think uh, right now the latest reports are he's still in a boot and on a scooter. Uh, he yeah. was playing uh, – table tennis the other day at a locker room he's still not doing interviews uh which for aj basically means he's not real close to uh getting on that rehab field Mm -hmm. but i think best case scenario is week three you're probably more likely looking week four uh week five uh for for a return for him um especially again if he's still in the boot and on the scooter I don't see him coming back anytime real soon. Uh, but at the same time, AJ has been historically a, a pretty quick healer. So three is probably optimistic. Five is probably about right. Where are we at, where are we at with AJ Green? Um, because it, this is the last year of his contract, right? Yep. So is this uh, – are we at a point with him where the injuries have have taken their toll and it's time to move on? Or – or is AJ Green at the point where he's done with the Bengals and it's time to move on? Or are we going to see this guy in a Bengals uniform for the rest of his career? If those are my three choices, I genuinely believe you'll see AJ Green in a Bengals uh, uniform for the rest of his career. Um, I mean, I hope so. I I do too. I mean, it's 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 tough to see a a superstar of that ilk go down you know the last couple two three years and 
really truly want to see him perform. I mean, like you think about the pace that he was on last year before he went down yeah. would have been one of his best years of his entire career, you know, eight years in that's, that's balling out. Yeah. Um, and there were high expectations for him this year being, okay, we got an offensive minded coach. Now, uh, Andy Dalton should be, should be better. Um, you know, and we all know AJ is his his primary target. I think the team was ready to sign him long term. I think AJ was ready to sign long term. This injury came up. Yes, it casts a shadow and casts some doubt. But I honestly believe if he comes back anywhere between week three and week five and performs to the level that AJ is typically going to perform by the end of the season, they'll have they'll have some uh, put together between the two of them. So say that happens, AJ Green comes back. He's the same old A.J. Green. You have Tyler Boyd, who who looked really good last year. You have Damian Willis. Hopefully he comes in and he's a stud. So you have those three guys once A.J. Green comes back. It, does anything change this year with John Ross? I mean, is he going to be used more? Is he is he going to improve at all? The two biggest questions with John Ross are, number one, injuries. And I have a big, big problem with uh, John Ross and – soft tissue injuries right if you break a leg if you get hit and crack a vertebra if you know any number of of crazy events happen where you're you're tyler eifert and your ankle you know explodes on contact like all right those are things that you can't necessarily prevent soft tissue injuries like hamstrings those are issues that say to me and i've talked to other in the former nfl players they say to me you're not doing what you need to do in order to be prepared for the season really that's a problem is it that or is it just that he's just not built for it nah so again if 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 you're getting if you're getting smacked and you're breaking ribs all right cool man you're 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 a small five nine you know, wide receiver who weighs a buck 70 and you're getting pounded around by 235 pound linebackers. All right. That makes sense. But John Ross is doing things that that don't require contact. Yeah. And, you know, again, pulling hamstrings, that's, that's Pilates. That's, that's yoga. That's doing all the proper stretching and doing everything that you need to do in order for those muscles to be ready to go. That has nothing to do with, with the game of football. So you think John Ross, that, so you, so you got a problem with John Ross and that, and, and with those issues, but John Ross is, is going to make this team. He's not going to play in week four of the preseason. He's Correct. Going, they want him to be ready for week one. And Correct. to be honest with that speed, he needs to be part of this team, especially with AJ green out for the first few weeks. Yeah. I mean, you, you don't spend the first round draft choice, you know, number nine overall on a guy to not have him be ready to go. And I think as as disappointing as it was and as frustrating as it was for fans, it, I think the coaching staff did a very good job of saying, you know what, let's just shelve this dude. Let's not push him. Let's not force the issue. We've got a couple of good young wide receivers that we're interested, at looking at, interested in looking at. Cool. Let those guys flourish. But honestly, let's get John Ross healthy and determine what, who and what John Ross really is, and then we can make a determination moving forward. But if he's not healthy and he's not ready to go and he's you know, pushing to get back because A.J.'s hurt or pushing to get back because this is the third year and you know he, he wants to sign you know, at least that fifth-year option, and right. nope, dude, just get healthy, and then we can make a determination of what we want to do. All right, so we want to throw the ball to to these guys, and we talk a lot about receivers. But let's be honest, Andy Dalton um, is is only has only had <laughs> very good years when his offensive line has been very good. Correct. This offensive line, man, I mean, it's not very good. <laughs> held together by medical tape and duct tape and some glue glue sticks maybe not We're, even good yeah. elmer's glue just yeah. glue sticks i know i know you cats are, are pretty young but there was this there was a guy his name was macgyver 
right? Of course. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. Know you need a paper and clip MacGyver, and a toothpick, and I can do anything. <laughs> exactly. MacGyver used to be like, I have a paper clip, a rubber band, and some chewing gum, and <laughs> get out of the most hairiest situations known to man yeah. with those three objects. Um, that's basically the Bengals offensive line right now because you have – Cordy Glenn, who is a walking injury, and I'm not even 100 percent sure that dude is going to play week one. So who's he's, so he's, so is it Andre Smith? Is Andre it Smith is, is going to be it, it, Andre it. Smith is going to end up starting yeah. at left tackle yeah. for this? For yeah. think about that, yeah. Andre Smith is going to end up starting at left <laughs> tackle at some point in time because Cordy Glenn's going to get hurt. Andre Smith is barely a serviceable right tackle, <laughs> let alone a starting left tackle. Yeah, I know it. I know it. And there is there is legitimate concern that he is your starting left tackle opening day. So with with that said about the offensive line, you're missing your best your best target. Um Andy Dalton being a an average quarterback, I'd say. I, are, I, are they I have one more question about the offensive oh, line before sorry. you say that. Yeah, go ahead. I got to ask you about Christian Westerman. <laughs> What's is he is he I mean come, he's 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 back with the team now. Does he have a chance of of making this team or there's no way in hell he makes this team. So like, he, there's no way. Like barring some sort of injury that they don't expect on Thursday, you can't be in competition to play guard position basically be like I don't really think I have a shot. Take your ball and go home. Let me think about it for a little while. Okay, cool. I'm gonna come back. Like, nah, man, you're not playing for me. So he's I the, okay. I, I can't trust you. I just don't understand what's going on, on with you. this guy. And, and I, I will say this: I haven't talked to Christian Westerman personally, so I can't, I can't, and I won't, you know, begin to speculate as to what's going on in that man's head. But I can say this: from Jim Turner's track record. He's looking for guys who are loyal and who want to work and who can endure the adversity that he brings within himself as a coach in order to, you know, in order to be a part of this team. And for Christian to not show up for a game, not travel with the team, really know or understand what was happening, what was going on, that's a problem. And I, 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 I can't have you on my team doing that. Yeah, I agree with you. Go ahead, Adam. Okay, so so we've established the offensive line might not be so improved. We're missing our, our best target. Andy Dalton is an average quarterback at best, probably with the offensive line that he has. Are they with the offensive line that he has? He's not even an average quarterback. Okay. okay. I'm just, I'm, I, listen, I, I love Andy Dalton. We've talked about this before, Andre. I like Andy Dalton. When yep. he's got a line, the guy's above average. There's, I mean, you know, I, I put him in the, you know, he's in the top 15. He's in the top half when he can play. But without an offensive line, this guy is, he's, he's a completely different quarterback. And it's a, it's a, it's, it's a struggle. But I don't know if there's anybody out there that would be any better. So go ahead. So, so then are they going to, just run the heck out of Joe Mixon and just do little, you know, three-step quick hitters to to try to not make the offensive line hold uh, hold blocks for five seconds and not make AJ Green figure out, you know, what he's going to do. Are, are so, they? Are they? Is that how they're going to run this offense? So I think the uh, a lot of this offense will be predicated on things that you saw with the with the Rams the last couple of years under Sean McVay. Mm -hmm. uh, there'll be a lot of motion. There'll be a lot of, you know, play action, quick hits, uh, double tight end where one of the tight ends, yeah, Drew Sample, for example, is a, is a, is a superb blocking tight end. Um, there will be, they'll have to scheme around the offensive line as opposed to letting the offensive line be dominant and, 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 and opening holes and, you know, doing the things that they need to do from that, that standpoint. But I'm, I'm concerned about the running game. I think if you watch preseason, uh, if you put any stock at all in pro football focus, um, you know, the offensive line has actually been really well rated when it comes to pass blocking. Andy Dalton hasn't been under a ton of pressure, nor have the other backup quarterbacks. 
the problem has been the Bengals are averaging two to three yards a carry, you know, when it when it comes to the running game. Now, Joe Mixon only has, you know, one or two carries throughout the preseason. So that's going to change once he gets in. But it's still Yeoman's work for him to be able to uh, do what he needs to do when that offensive line isn't up to snuff, especially in the run game. So uh, it, uh, this is where Zach Taylor, Brian Callahan, uh, Jim Turner will really truly earn earn their money in trying to design uh, you know ways to compensate for the uh, the, the offensive line. Mm-hmm. Okay, maybe I'm underrating the offense here, but is the defense moving to that side of the ball? Is the defense going to have to be a top two or three defense in the league in order for the Bengals to have a chance to contend at all or, or have a, a winning season or close to one? If so, you might as well wrap up the season. Sure. I mean, I mean because the, the basic difference between last year's bottom of the league defense and this year is you have a uh, a healthy Carl Lawson, who's a freak, by the way. That right? dude, he's oh, looked awesome. He yeah, makes, he makes me so happy when he takes the field. <laughs> oh my god! Uh, but you got you got a healthy Carl Lawson. Um, you got a healthy Ryan Glasgow. Um, you drafted Jermaine Pratt in the third round, and you hope he develops into something. That's it, man. That you got Jesse Bates in year two instead of year one. Dude. Other than that, you really genuinely made zero improvement on the defensive side of the ball. Um, yeah. This, this, the, 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 everything on this defense, besides the defensive line and the safeties, scare me. So basically, everybody in the middle of the field. Every I'm not line, lie to you. The linebacking core and the cornerbacks. One, one of those two safeties scare me. Sean Williams in coverage is terrible. Uh, I'll give you in yeah. in coverage. Yes, you watch, he you might watch end up Sean he Williams might end up playing try, middle linebacker at some point in time. You, you watch Sean Williams try to cover a tight end and or a running back. It's not pretty. It's not pretty. Yep. Um, and William Jackson the third. I mean, we can only hope he becomes what we wanted him to become the last last year i have have reservations right that was your guy last year it was like he's gonna be traveling around with the number one with the number one guy all game long and 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 anoint him to be the end all be all you know hey we got the next revis island coming through william jackson and i don't I don't feel that comfortable. I'm not going to lie to you. And I don't know if it's because, you know, he's not as comfortable with the with, with the safety play. I don't know if it's, you know, the pressure of having to to, to, to follow the, the top man, you know, on a team. Although there has been talk that he's going to play one side and, and Kirk Patrick is going to play the other side and they're just going to stay that way. But even still, um, you know, I I don't feel as comfortable about him this year as I did last year. So if you have if you have a you have a you have a defensive line that I feel really 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 good about. Sure. You have you have linebackers that I am not sure that at today I would keep more than four, and I would scour the waiver wires for my fifth and or sixth. There, there uh, is not there is no nobody else. I mean, you have no, Preston Brown. They're, they're. Preston Brown. Yeah. Is good is is the only one that that probably is even any good, and he hasn't even played in a year. Nick, well, I like I don't mind Nick Vigil. I think Nick Vigil is serviceable. So Nick Vigil um, is your uh, uh, Vinny Ray, right? Yeah. Nick Vigil is Vinny Ray. Nothing special. Yeah. Just get the job done. Get out. Which is which is fine, and I'm I'm okay with that if if you have other pieces. So you got Nick Vigil, you got Preston Brown, you got uh, Jermaine Pratt and um, Hardy Nickerson, what? Jordan Evans. No, 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 hell no, no, absolutely not. They're no, talking about keeping no. Hardy Nickerson on this team. No, no, absolutely not. No, uh, just for nostalgia, listen, maybe. I... <laughs> uh, and Jordan Evans. I'm sorry, Jordan, Jordan Evans, Evans. Right. Yeah. So those are the four that I feel, quote unquote, comfortable with keeping and making the team. Anybody after that, 
Malik Jefferson, Hardy Nickerson, uh, the dude they drafted in this sixth round this year. Like, I don't feel comfortable with any of those dudes at all. Like, I, if there is a linebacker who hits, you know, final cuts, who, you know, there's there's some talk that maybe a cat like Kiko Alonso will, will get cut. Um, I, I would be willing to look at, bring in and sign just about anybody after those first four. Right. So we covered uh, we covered the offense, covered the defense. When we were talking about John Ross, it just kind of hit me that it seems like it makes more sense for him to be a special teams player, like returning punts and kicks. They had him returning some. With it, yeah, I, he's uh, in practice the, uh, today um, or yesterday or someday. I heard. Yeah, I don't know if he's going to do that or not. But um, so we've we've kind of covered cover the bases here. So your prediction then. How, how, yeah. what, what what's the what's the record what's the record gonna be yeah well let's go through it let's go through it real quick you ready yeah, yeah. i know you've been through this a thousand times but here we go <laughs> here we go here we go one two three uh let's see four here we go week one seattle at Lost. seattle that's an yeah there's no way there's no not. way sure. they are going into seattle and winning that game i mean there's no reason that they should win no. that game. You no. won't have AJ Green. You'll have an offensive line that has had two weeks to attempt to try to gel together. And again, I'm not 100 percent sure that Cordy Glenn is going to play that first game. So now you got a bunch of silent counts with Andre <laughs> Smith playing left tackle the in the loudest, loudest stadium. Yeah, and it, yeah nah, that's not happening, man. Like it's just not happening. We all I, we all agree on happening. that. We all agree yeah. on that. That's that's an L. I'm good with that. Right. All right. Um, now. The next game is at home against the 49ers. I don't believe in the Jimmy G hype. I Really? I, yeah, I don't. I really don't. Um, I do think the biggest nightmare for the Bengals in that game will be Kittle. Because um, obviously and gonna, you don't think Sean Williams is going to guard him. That is absolutely, <laughs> you're absolutely right. Nor, nor any of our linebackers. So uh, Kittle's going to be a problem. And whoever drafted him – in week two of uh, fantasy football is yep. winning that that week for yep. sure. Uh, but if they can find some way to – you uh, you can't control them, but you can only hope to contain them type of deal, uh, I think the Bears can win that game. I like it. I got a W for that too. Adam? Okay, I'll go with you guys. Oh, that's terrible. <laughs> All right, Buffalo Bills, we don't even talk about that, right? Even though it's in Buffalo, that's a W. I believe – I. Yes, I'll say yes. I'll say yes. I'm not. I'm not as confident uh, as I was maybe at the start of like training camp before like AJ and Jonah and all that stuff happened. But I still feel like we should be Buffalo. Okay, Adam in Buffalo. In Buffalo, loss. Ugh, Adam's gonna have us with like fifteen. But, see, but but so what if I throw at you in Buffalo? But early season in Buffalo, so you're not dealing with weather. You, you know, it's still without uh, AJ Green. Still without AJ Green, but <laughs> you're also facing, you know, Josh Allen, hundred and sixty year old Lashawn McCoy, hundred and eighty seven year old Frank Gore. Like, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's possible. Frank Gore, Frank Gore is my guy. That's a that's a you just convinced me. That's a loss for the Bengals. <laughs> 100, 124 yards for Frank Gore in that game. There you go. <laughs> the same as his age. One, one, I was gonna say one yard for each of his years of being alive. Exactly. Got <laughs> All right, at Pittsburgh, I think that's no. an L. No, nah, that's not happening. That's an L. Uh, Arizona at home. This is interesting because this Arizona team win, is a little. We have no idea who here. these guys are. I'm gonna tell you right now. If we don't beat Arizona at home, so you got a team that hasn't been together but barely a month into the regular season with a rookie quarterback, a rookie head coach. And a rookie uh, quarterback that doesn't look good. That, yeah. And, and basically two players in David Johnson and Larry Fitzgerald, who also is 124 years old, if but you can't beat that team, you might as well wrap up the rest of the season. Larry Fitzgerald might be 124 years old also, but he's still, to this day, best tush in the game. 
Now, I don't. Let I don't. Me ask I can't you this. explain. Let me this ask to you this. Andre, I don't have know. you? Have you? Kyler Kyler Murray wears these. Where is is? It might be the best tandem. Kyler Murray to <laughs> to Larry Fitzgerald, best best backside in all of football. You know what? I'm gonna take your word for it. Oh, <laughs> don't, <laughs> don't give me that. Um, he's got great hair. I love that. Great, I give you that. He's got great hair. I love Larry Fitzgerald too. Frank Gore and Larry Fitzgerald. I drafted those guys in fantasy football like six years in a row. Not the last <laughs> like three years, when but you were six like, years old. Like, you yeah, them. yeah, like nine years ago, I started drafting those guys. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> so yeah, if you can't if you can't win that game, um, I I have a hard time seeing you winning really many others at all, if if any. Adam W L, what do you got? W. Oh, okay. All right. So then we're then we're in Baltimore. In Baltimore. Yep. So. One of the great things about uh, Marvin Lewis is that, for whatever reason, he owned Baltimore. Mm -hmm. Like, just either by sheer will or he had some sort of, like, voodoo dolls in his his office. Like, I don't know. He he, Um, he brought over from Baltimore? (laughs) Right. Like, he was just like, hey, I got this, fellas. We suck, but we're going to beat Baltimore. (laughs) Right. Um, So, in Baltimore... Uh, Lamar Jackson, second year, five weeks in now. Ew. Yeah, I'm going to say no. Adam? Uh, loss on that. Uh, I'm going with a W. Uh, Jacksonville here. Jacksonville has got an unbelievable defense this year. I don't know. Does, uh, is A.J. Green back by then, and is he fighting Jalen Ramsey? That's week seven, so probably. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm. Somebody's chains getting snatched, and and yeah. you know something crazy is going to happen. I'm <laughs> <Right>. sure. <laughs> oh, that one that was a that was a keep to leave, wasn't it? No, that was that was yeah, that, yeah, that was to leave. That was to leave yeah. and Crabtree. My bad, my bad. I got the wrong yeah. one. These two yeah, just yeah. throw they they just try to yeah. punch each other that in was the helmet. AJ which Green is super throwing smart. haymakers and slamming cats around. Yeah, like WWE. Yeah. yeah. Who, who, why 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 do football players try to punch each other in the helmet? I don't know. It's the dumbest thing I've ever seen. Especially wide receivers. Oh, like you need two things. You need feet and hands. Why are you throwing your hands? Exactly. Just, yeah. Anyway. Uh, Jacksonville, Nick Foles is now their quarterback. We say it's here or there. It's here. I'm gonna take that dub. Where hey. Ooh. There you go. Ooh. So you got him at you got him at four and two. I've got right him now. at wait a minute. Yeah. What am I missing at? Yeah, I got him at Oh, you got him at like five and one. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think I do got him at five and one right now. <laughs> oh, jeez. All right, Adam. That's a loss for me. That's a loss. Adam's got him. Adam's got him at four and two. Do I? No, miss- Adam got him at two and four. <laughs> I'm missing here. Yeah, two and four. Two that's what's. But that's week seven. How do I miss something in here? Oh, the Baltimore game. Adam, you said that was a loss. Yeah. He's got him at two and two, two and, and five. five. Yeah. All right. All right, and you got him at four and three. Weird. Three and four, or four and three, one, four, and, two. four, four three. and three. You got four Ws. All right, All right now All right. we're now we're at La- L.A. That's a that's a loss. In the Rams, yeah, in L.A. Yeah, that's a loss. That's a loss. That's a loss that's for a loss. everybody. Yeah. Uh, let's see. By week nine, week ten, we got Baltimore at home. That's probably a loss. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So much for that five hundred record that Andre had him at. Adam, you know what? I'm going with a win here. All right. What? Sure. Why? Why? Not? I I, Why? I went with a loss. I went with a loss in Baltimore. And I'm I'm going to take the win here. Why? Like seriously? Other than I flipped the coin and they lost the first one, I'm gonna give them the second. What is your justification for giving them the second win? Uh, because I don't want I don't want to make my final record t- two and fourteen. <laughs> <laughs> So, so I got to find a win somewhere. So I got to so find a win. They somewhere. just got their got third it. win. All right. <laughs> All right. Now this one, this one is interesting. In Oakland, that's a win. Oakland's terrible. Antonio Brown, his Oakland's he's got he'll terrible. have plenty of new skin on his feet by then. <laughs> he'll be he'll be nice and comfortable <laughs> in his new helmet. <laughs> but, Vontez Burvigo missed the game for something stupid. So, yeah, uh, yeah. Well, he's getting suspended in week two, so we're not yeah. going to worry about that. Worry yeah. about that. <laughs> That's a dub. <laughs> okay, Adam, what do you got? I guess I'll take a win. Wow. 
Let's see. So, all right, that's 10. The Raiders might be my second favorite NFL team, but I'll take the Bengals. Over. I just want you guys to know that I got them at 7-3 and three so far. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're do. Week 12, you're week 12 in Pittsburgh. <laughs> Does anybody have them winning this game? Week 12 no. in Pittsburgh. There's nah, no chance. No. I got a loss there. All yeah, right. no way in hell. Now you're – now. oh, that that's not in Pittsburgh. That Week 12 is here in Cincinnati. It doesn't, it doesn't, doesn't matter. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter to me. It could be either. on Mars. Yeah, no. They just don't beat Pittsburgh. <laughs> okay, how about here against the Jets? Uh, Maybe on Bell. Hmm. That's a game that historically I'd be like, yeah, the Bengals will win that game. I don't know, man. Hmm. Mm. Well, you know what I'm, I'm going to say. I got a W on that. I know you got a W on that one. <laughs> Uh, we're, creeping, we're creeping real close to 11 and 5. I'm at 8 and 4 right now. For God's sake. <laughs> You're so ridiculous. <laughs> um, I could find a way to make this happen. Yeah, I really want to beat the Jets. I'm a, uh, they're going to mess around and lose that game, man. All right. All right. I'll mark you down. That's an L. Adam? I think the, the excitement of the new coaching staff is has worn off by far by then. So I take a loss there. You guys are rough. All right, now we're in Cleveland. Now it's fun. So you got the last – these last uh, one, two, three, four games are fun because it's Cleveland, New England, Miami, Cleveland. Man. In okay. Cleveland. We can we can wrap this we can wrap this whole podcast up right now. L L L L L. That's a that's a L say it again. Give me give me the order. Cleveland. Uh huh. Patriots. Uh huh. Dolphins. Browns. There's one win in there. L L Dub L. Oh, so you got them losing twice to Cleveland. Yeah. Let me tell you this: pump the brakes on Cleveland. I need all my Cleveland people just pump the brakes. This is the year. Why? This is your year. This is your chance to get the division. I'm good with that. But I'm tired of hearing all this Super Bowl, getting to the Super Bowl, and all this. Let's win a Let's win a playoff game first. Sure. What sure. are the chances? That a guy like Baker Mayfield, who lit, didn't he lead the league in interceptions and only played like eleven games, I mean, or thirteen, whatever he did. Let's let's pump the brakes. Let's let's find out if Odell can really. Buy, that you're taught. We don't play them first until week fourteen. There's a good chance that Odell Beckham Jr. and Baker Mayfield hate each other by then. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but winning solves all. Yes, it does. All Cleveland needs to do is win. Yeah, I mean, you go seven. I think what did they go seven and nine last year. Um, that what it was. Something, when something like that, yeah. With Hugh Jackson running the show for at least half of that, mm-hmm. if you can get seven wins with Hugh Jackson as your head coach, that's doing something. Not and that's Hugh Jackson <laughs> not playing Nick Chubb and not playing that, Baker Mayfield. So correct, <laughs> correct. Speaking of that, yeah. what 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 channel is uh? Are are uh, Marvin Lewis and um, you just said his name for goodness sake? Who, Nick Hugh Jackson? Uh, no, oh, Hugh Jackson. Hugh Jackson. What what channel are those guys going to be on this year? Because <laughs> neither no, of well, them are working in the NFL. Marvin, right? No, no, no. Marvin Lewis Marvin's is, on the uh, NFL channel. Assistant with Arizona State and Herm Edwards. Oh, oh, oh that's right. I did yeah, hear yeah, that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Oh, okay. You know what? I love Herm Edwards. So I hope I hope he does well there. I hope Marvin Lewis does well there. All right. So I'm I'm saying in Cleveland's a loss. I already know Andre said it's a loss. Yeah. Um Adam. I'm going same as Andre. Loss, loss, win, loss. All right. Yeah. All right. Well, you're gonna have to write that out because I don't know what that is. Well, I got Adam's I, got him with five wins. I know okay. And Andre I know, Andre's got him with six wins. I, mm-hmm. I had seven. Is that you got six wins? I only got six for him. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I got seven. You said you said a win against the Dolphins, right? I did. Okay, so Andre's got set. You got seven wins. Seven, that's seven, seven and nine. nine. That's a that's a decent year. But the problem is, is we're not going to be able to pick a quarterback up early in next year's in next year's draft because we're drafting too low because of that. <laughs> that is the problem with having Andy Dalton as your starting quarterback. You're never going to get to replace him. You you will never be as bad as you need to be in order to replace him. Well, I've only got a, I, I've only got him up to uh up to 9 wins, so I'm I'm not not nearly as comfortable as I was before. 
But that's okay. I, I got hey, high hopes for these guys, man. You never know. This offensive line, Zach Taylor might have these guys playing quick and fast, and, and the offensive line may not be that big of a deal. And if you can keep a guy like John Ross healthy with his speed and learn and, and actually use him the way Marvin never even attempted to use him, this this team's got potential. It really does. It's so or at least I can talk are... about it and make it sound like it. <laughs> well, so just looking purely at the skill positions, with it, let's say a healthy AJ Green comes back in. Let's be optimistic and say he comes back in week three. Mm-hmm. You got AJ Green, Tyler Boyd, some sort of use for John Ross, Damian Willis, and the rest of the wide receiver core. You got CJ Uzama. The, the one cat who is actually flying under the radar because everybody feels like he's going to get broken at some point is Tyler Eifert. Yep. I, like, that nobody even 100%. talks about him. Nobody does because they just because assume he's going to be hurt. Yeah, it's just assumed that he will be hurt within the first three weeks of the season. Right. But say he doesn't, that is a weapon that nobody has an answer for. Right. Not to mention Joe Mixon, Giovanni Bernard, and the two six-round draft choices at running back that – are killing it like Trayvon those, Williams and Rodney Anderson. Those are pieces that other teams would absolutely envy. This entire offense hedges on that offensive line. Yep. And, and what can happen or what doesn't happen based upon the play of that offensive line. If they if can play quick enough, they can serviceable. Do it. I don't even need it to be top 10. If it can be top 20 in a 32-team league, this team offensively has a shot. I agree. I'm, I, the problem, I agree. The problem is Bobby Hart is a turnstile. <laughs> At least he was last year. Cordy Glenn is a shell of himself from an injury perspective and, again, may not even make the field week one, which means Andre Smith is playing <laughs> like that one. Sweet mercy. Fort was his fourth time with the Bengals now. How many times has he been through? How many times has he been off the team, cut, brought back? And it's ridiculous. You got a undrafted free agent starting at center. You got a fourth round draft choice starting at left guard. You got a dude who the Buffalo Bills said can't play for us at right guard, but hey, you can play for the Bengals. Yep. Starting at right guard. Like, on paper, that offensive line is trash. I don't, and that's, it. And that's I, your Achilles that's heel it. on that's offense. That's it. Yep. And, and on defense, on defense, it's everybody behind the defensive line. Yeah. It's, <laughs> it's, it's taking the worst, statistically speaking, one of the worst defenses in the entire league last year, bringing back a healthy Carl Lawson, bringing back a healthy Ryan Glasgow and drafting a third round linebacker. Other than that, it's the exact same. I feel like you guys are underestimating the fact that the Bengals have the greatest basketball player of all time on their team, but that's just me. Michael Jordan is a guard for him. So, you know, (laughs) he's a guard. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Uh, the, the the very last thing I have for you, Andre, and then we're going to let you go to bed because you're probably going to get like four hours of sleep now because of us. That's um, right. So, <laughs> the, the the last few the last few days, and thank goodness there's other news besides besides uh, Brown's helmet, besides Antonio Brown's helmet, <laughs> is <laughs> is uh, Andrew Luck deciding to retire Ooh. out of nowhere, kind of. Man. Um. His his reasoning, I'm I'm sure you probably saw that, was that he was sick of being hurt and going through rehab and being hurt again and going th- and just just his body going through the gauntlet every year it seems like for the last four years and he was sick of that and he didn't want to keep going through that so he retired and he's only 29 years old and I you know people were talking about you know when he's healthy he's going to be you know he might have a spectacular year this year and the Colts are supposed to be good again and What's your take? I mean, do, do you feel like he quit on his team? Do you feel like he did the right thing? What do you think? I think it can be both. 
I mean, I, I know. I agree with that. You know, we're looking, we're looking for, uh, when we do podcasts and we do shows, you know, we're looking for the, the latest hot take of, oh, let me make this bold, wild statement. But I legitimately believe it can be both things. He quit on his squad. There's no question about that. You can't deny that. It is literally two weeks before the start of the season. Now, there's talk that he had conversations with, you know, Jacoby Brissett and with the front office and, you know, over the last couple of weeks. But let's give him the benefit of the doubt and say it's still, what, a month before the season starts? And your franchise quarterback, not just a wide receiver, not just a running back, not just, you know, a shutdown corner. This is the team and the face of the team is coming to you and saying, I can't do this anymore. He quit. No doubt. Listen, I am all about when it's time, you know, it's time. And it's your it's your choice. I got I it's not I it's not my choice if you're gonna retire. I have nothing to do with that. So if you want to retire, you can retire. I don't like the fact that he did it the week before the season started. With one preseason no. game left. That's what mm-hmm. I now these guys are out here trying to trying to sign anybody they can to be a backup quarterback for uh for uh Kobe Brissett. Yeah, Brissett. So this is it's so tough. You get a lot of people calling him, you know, some people say that he's that he's soft uh, and that he's soft yeah. and some people are saying that he, you know, he's the he's a he's not a hero, but a you know, I don't know, somebody who's who's showing the way that it's okay to do and they they applaud him and things like that. I I don't I, I, I'm with you, man. I, I think it's too much that people try to get on one side or the other. It's yeah. it's both. I mean, look at look at the injuries that that dude has had. You know, he's played he's played football games with torn cartilage between his rib cage. Yep. Like you or I would be, you know, laid up in in a in a hospital bed asking for morphine mm-hmm. <laughs> if we had the same injuries that this dude has had. And you look at the team and the the reliance or over reliance on his talent as opposed to Get that man the offensive line, mm-hmm. right? That's uh, and and to be honest, the ownership and the general managers of the Indianapolis Colts are the ones that Indianapolis Colts fans should be blaming right now because Absolutely. they are the reason that he is doing this because he got One. sacked. Oh, they, he got sacked a hundred times in the first three years, a hundred times, and that's not including how many times he got hit. The, the dude's just been beat up, beat to snot. I mean that I mean it, it's just absolutely ridiculous. If you're going to draft somebody with that type of potential to where you could genuinely say, Hey, we went from Peyton Manning to Peyton Manning Andrew Jr. Luck, right? We went from Peyton Manning to Peyton Manning Jr. Right? And, and maybe even better because he had a bigger body and had some, you know, shiftiness about him that Peyton didn't have. Right. And you spend zero resources really to protect that asset that's on you yep i agree and so i think you he quit on his team but at the same time four years of being in constant pain four years think about that man like if you go play you know turkey bowl football Mm -hmm. and tweak your ankle and it hurts for, I don't know, two weeks, four weeks, six weeks to where you're popping Motrin and icing it and doing all of those things. And for six straight weeks, it just hurts and it aches and it's sore. And you're like, God, this is annoying. And every time I step wrong, I feel a shot of pain that goes up through my body. And I, ah, can you imagine doing that for four years? <laughs> No chance. But he's soft. But he's soft. Right. But he. But he's soft. Yeah. The None same people us, that call him soft call off because they got a little cough. They call correct. off to work because they got a little cough. The, the, the same people who are calling him soft are the people who are more upset because they drafted him on their fantasy team. <laughs> yeah. You know, OJ before Simpson. the announcement came out. Like let's let's be very honest about what we're talking about here. That's why people are upset. People are upset because they're fans. Right. Which which is short for fanatic, 
which my is what we all level. are. But it's you, we're talking about a human being. And oftentimes we take our sports figures and put them on pedestals that they can never genuinely live up to. Mm -hmm. And for four straight years, that man has been in a level of pain that none of us would ever want to see. Absolutely. And that's exactly why I'm I'm a little bit more and I do understand. Yes, he did quit on his team and it's it's late in the preseason and all that kind of stuff. But he made the correct decision. He made the right decision for his life. And yeah. It, it, so it I, I can't blame him at all. I can't be mad at him. I'm I'm very disappointed in the people that booed him the other the other day. You know what though? The booing is he walked off. Uh, that's that's a fan thing. That's, that's I think it's that's gonna I happen. think it's stupid it's, to it boo your own stupid. guy no matter what. Anyway, I don't, but no, nobody likes negativity on a for for the, I hate negativity in if if against your home team. I don't yeah. like that for anything in the world. However, it's gonna happen. It is what it is. Those are the same people that they that. It, I, that we it, were just, it just talking happens. about exactly yeah. exactly yeah. you got to get over that yeah i think it's just it's the it's the immediate reaction right, right? it's the it's the knee-jerk reaction of i'm a fan i care about the colts you just quit on the colts i'm hurt i'm i'm way too overly attached to this thing that i really have no stake in other than my fandom right right i'm uh, irrationally I'm, attached I'm not to getting it. paid yep. you know it, none of that stuff is really happening to me yeah. you let uh, us down you let us down. You let me down no he didn't let correct. you down he yeah. let, right. let his team down <laughs> yeah yeah uh, it's i mean it's the same thing rob Gronkowski. same reason rob Gronkowski retired and gronk you know is now out here promoting cbd oil saying he might come back in three months <laughs> But yeah. or nope. two months or two months or three years or two, or two, or two years. weeks or <laughs> three months or two months or yeah yeah you know <laughs> greatest oh once his once so his great. once his adult film career gets started he, he'll be officially <laughs> retired i'm sure <laughs> hey andre thank you so 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 much i feel like we owe you a million times over for nah, coming man. on with we us at least again. Tell you dinner or something i, I could tell you what man it is it is just as much fun for me to talk with you guys um as as you guys portray that it is a talk to me i promise you well we appreciate that for sure so let hey let everybody know because uh andre is one of the best follows out there he's always got he goes back and forth from really really funny to some good sports talk to you know regular twitter stuff to being so. depressed about something the Bengals did or whatever right yeah but let, hey, great great right follow now, the the funniest stuff on twitter right now is uh, Popeye's chicken versus Chick Fil A. Oh, I'm just saying, is. right now, were that you, is the funniest thing going on Twitter were, right were now. Were you the one that put up the uh, the the video, the Chick Fil A guy in Popeye's? Uh, yeah, that's what I thought in the Popeye's yes. uh, drive-through. <laughs> oh man, I'm like it is the absolute funniest thing that is going on on Twitter right now. So if you want Bengals coverage, and you know, I dip into a little bit of Reds every once in a while, I get a little political, but mostly just. Super ridiculously funny stuff about Popeyes versus Chick Fil A. You can just follow me at Andre Edwards 06. Have you had both sandwiches? I have, and which, which at one? the same time. So, oh. so literally wow. the other day, went out and uh, I sent the wife to Chick Fil A. I went to Popeyes, grabbed the Popeyes, brought them all back home, cut them up, and was like, "All right, let's make this stuff happen. Let's do it." <laughs> And man, that Popeye's chicken sandwich is, is, is where it's at, son. I'm not wow, gonna lie. Oh, really? I need to try it. Man, I haven't. I don't think I've seen one bad review. It's, no, I'm have you, you ever seen a bad review on Chick Fil A sandwich either, though? Yeah, mine. I don't like Chick Fil A very much. What? Yeah, I'm sorry. Something Unpopular wrong. opinion, Something but wrong with you, bro. Sorry. I I I enjoyed them both, but I'm just gonna tell you, there is there is just something about that Popeye's chicken sandwich. That was like, oh, I might need another one. Of those. Real quick, let me tell you, it doesn't matter how good it is because if you live on the west side of Cincinnati and you go to the Popeye's Chicken on Glenway, they will be out of it. <laughs> <laughs> they were out of straws last time I went there, dude. They were out of straws. They've been out of fries, out of straws. One time they were out of chicken. How? Like your pop? What? Don't go to the Popeye's on Glenway. On the west side of Cincinnati. 
I'm just telling you, <laughs> every time I've been there, they've been out of some. I'm not kidding you. They were literally, they've been out of fries, chicken, and straws three times that I've been there. Well, sometime oh. this weekend, I'm going to go see if they have a chicken sandwich. They'll have the chicken sandwich because they probably, that's the one thing they probably stocked up on. <laughs> It's just ridiculous. And I'm telling you, it's worth it's worth a trip, man. I'm not gonna lie. To you. It's not it's not worth a half an hour wait. It's not uh, worth you know anything else that's just absolutely ridiculous in order to taste it. But if you can pull up, order it, and they got it ready, it's worth the trip. I'm gonna do it. I'm uh, I'm gonna have to try. I'm gonna have to give it a try too. On your recommendation, I'm doing it. Yeah, I promise you, you won't be disappointed. All right, Andre. Well, thank you so much. Get some yes, sleep. Sir. I look forward to the next Debonair concert. <laughs> yeah, hey, you you and me both. <laughs> All right, Andre. All right, Thanks, boys. man. Yeah, yeah. Bye. All right. Andre Edwards, ladies and gentlemen, at Andre Edwards06 on Twitter. Uh locked on bangles.com, uh contributor, writer. Good stuff. That gets better every time. He he's a, he's amazing. Andre Edwards <laughs> is just he's he, he's just an awesome guy. Follow him on Twitter. He's uh he's a lot of fun. Um, always got something funny on there. So, <laughs> all right, man. Speaking of Twitter, shoot yours out. Uh, while, we're, while we're doing Twitter, just yeah, just I'm at sick with it. S I C W H I T T I T. That's an important because that can be an that can be a confusing spelling. One hundred percent. Um, I'm at Adam Schmidt forty four. That's pretty easy. Adam Schmidt forty four. All right, Adam Schmidt. Uh, Aristides Aquino. Oh, is that my was that my nickname? No, or, he's number no. forty-four. Number forty-four. You're right. Who I just mean, broke? Uh, who just broke a record? He did again. Again, the fastest player to thirteen home runs. Only player to thir- with thirteen home runs bef- uh, within his first hundred plate appearances. Yeah, this dude's insane. He's having a he's having a nice start to his career. You think Not he could sure be is. the? Uh, you think he could be the MVP with only playing one month? Uh, yeah. I mean, if I'm voting for MVP of the National League. In 2019, I'm voting Aristides right. Aquino. I don't know why you wouldn't vote for. I don't know why you would vote for anybody else, except for maybe the guys that actually deserve it, which come down to probably Cody Bellinger or Christian Yelich. Right? I mean, we're pretty much at that point, right? We're 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 pretty much just one of the two. One of the two. And here's the thing: as I was looking through these at these guys' numbers, comparing the two, they're to me they're so close that this last month of the season. Every day is going to matter for this MVP race. It, yeah. It's going to matter because you have – okay, so you have Bellinger who has 11 more runs. He has uh, he has more – well, he's one more home run. He has 11 more RBIs. He has seven more walks. But then Yelich has a better average on base and slugging than Bellinger. So Bellinger is better average, by the way. Yes, definitely. Uh, 21 points higher, 330 to 309. Yeah, all, all I mean his average on base and slugging are quite a bit higher than Bellinger's, but Bellinger ha- has higher numbers in the in the stats that matter I think a little bit more. You you win by scoring runs. So if you're scoring a lot of runs yourself or driving in a lot of runs, I think that's more valuable than any of those other things. So for that reason, Bellinger barely edges Yelich out right now to me. But at the same time, um, Cody Bellinger's played 10 more games than Christian Yelich has, by the way. Okay. So, but by, I think, I really think by the end, we have to wait until the last day of the season and then look at their numbers total again once they've played a closer number of, of games and, and see, you know, whether Yelich catches up or scoring runs and whether Bellinger picks up a looking OPS. Mm-hmm. So for me, that's why Bellinger just barely uh, gets my vote over Yelich right now. Let's please not forget about Anthony Rendon. Yes, he's not going to, he's not going to, he's not going to win the MVP, but I think he's that third. Cause you have three finalists the way they vote for these oh, things now. Well, yeah. And I think he's probably, I mean, you can talk about Acuna and Freeman and Arenado and a couple other guys, but but I think you know. It's, I think ultimately, it's definitely going to come down to Bellinger and Yelich, and I think we're going to need this last month. I I agree with you and Rendon. The guy's been great. Josh Bell's been great. Really good ball players. But yeah, I, I agree that Rendon should probably be three. I'm with <clears throat> I'm with Bellinger at this moment in time. I mean, you take out on base percentage and slugging percentage, which are 
you know, huge, big, or, or nice stats that show a combination of multiple things, mm-hmm. Yelich has got him beat. However, in just your straight up, everyday, run of the mill, big categories that that are what these people are probably going to be looking at when they vote, it comes down to to Bellinger, and he also plays for a team that's by far the best team in all of baseball. So I, that puts me that that to me is a big part of what puts him over the top for me. Now, American League, is there any doubt who's going to win the the MVP in the American League? You know, I I really think um, that you can make a case for some other guys. I oh, really yeah? do. Okay, who are you making a case for? Um, okay, so I can make a case for. I could probably make a case for Rafael Devers, Bogarts. I'm telling you, four or five about being at least one of the three finalists. I mean, sure. and we had two Mookie of the three Betts, finalists uh, last year. Mookie Betts, Xander Bogarts, Rafael Devers, J.D. Martinez. Uh, JD Martinez. Those guys are all having, like, top ten. I mean, you have four or five Red Sox who should be in the top ten of uh, – top eight, maybe, MVP voting. Alex Bregman is having a terrific year. Um I mean, you have guys that you that you can look at and say, man, uh, let's at least talk about these guys. I'll tell you what, just flipping through these stats, just look, just throwing the American League up and just flipping through these stats real quick, Devers might be your – he might be the MVP. I, I think he flies so far under the radar too because you're so used to hearing about J.D. Martinez and Xander Bogarts and – Mike Trout. And, yeah, and, and these guys that – Oh, for, for, the, for, for the Red Sox. For the Red Sox, yeah. There are three or four guys that you think of first before you think of Rafael Devers, but that guy, I think he's I think he's leading the league in hits. Yep. Um, he, I mean, he has put hits, together – doubles, RBIs, he leads the league in. And uh, he is third in batting average. Yeah, I th- that's impressive. This 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 Red Sox team, they've got they've got and uh, they might not even make the playoffs. Oh uh, yeah, they, I mean they've got three or four guys in the top in the top five of everything. Mm-hmm. They are really good. Yep, it's offensively, offensively, but yet still the Yankees are the Yankees. They are. Um. So so I I still I still think Mike Trout wins it. Yeah, I'm with you. I still put my a big part of that is uh, comes down to walks, um, because uh, just just being on base, and and the fact that he's just not getting near the amount of pitches thrown to him as some of these other guys because he's not protected in that lineup near like like these other guys like the whole Red Sox team is. Mm-hmm. So uh, that means something to me. Yeah. Um I also said the standings mean something to me too, which obviously <laughs> if that's the case then uh well, then they, it wouldn't be that way for the for the do. Angels because the Angels are in second last place in the West, not even a 500 record. So I still just like it's Mike Trout, man. Yeah, I, don't I know. mean, it's just it's Mike Trout. Look, the guy's got, unbelievable. Guys have won the MVP that were not on playoff teams before. It's not sure. out of the realm, not of very often, or, but right, right. But Trout is so good. Everybody knows whether he, whatever his stats are, everybody knows he is the best player in baseball, right? Sure, I don't think there's any doubt. But it, he's the best player in baseball, and people know that just by his tangibles. But he's also leading the American League in walks on base percentage, leading all of big boy baseball and home runs, leading the American League in slugging, OPS, third in runs, second in RBIs. He's right there at the top of just about everything. It really, in this case, I think the Angels record doesn't matter quite as much because Mike Trout's your American League MVP. Unless something, unless he has a, a, just a catastrophic decline in the last month of the season for some reason and I don't expect him to sure unless something like that happens I, I I think he's your MVP I mean I'm with you and he's doing you know and he's doing it out of the one and two hole so that's even more impressive yeah um I I'm I'm with you on that I think those are I and I I think it's pretty simple I don't think there's too too much to even go I mean I don't think it's too much past that I like this Rendon kid though mm-hmm yeah, I like this Devers kid. I yep. think they both have. They both are. I, Devers has got a chance. He's got a chance if he continues doing what he's doing, just purely by looking at stats. 
he's got a chance to he's got a chance to win the MVP. It feels to me like every night when I'm watching the Reds game and you see the bottom line scroll across all the scores yep. and the stats, it feels like I see three for four, four for five, yeah. two for three with two walks from Rafael Devers. That guy has multi-hit games almost every night, it seems like, and uh, it's it's impressive. And it's, again, like I said, you don't think about him. You think about – I even think about Andrew Benintendi, who's also having a great right. year because he's from, uh, he's from he's this from, area. Yeah. But you, and then you think about four or five other guys, and then you're like, "Oh wait, Rafael Devers has the most hits in baseball this year, really?" It's crazy. So anyway, um, we'll keep an eye on, on the MVP race. We'll, we'll probably talk about the Cy Young race coming up here pretty soon. Um, we'll, we'll start going over some of these races for Rookie of the Year, and you know, does Aristides Aquino have any chance this late in the season of being in the in that final two how, or three guys? How many at bats? There, he's definitely. This is definitely going to be considered his rookie year, right? I yeah. don't know what the number of at bats are, or plate appearances, or whatever that if officially make you a rookie. But it has nothing to do with if you can be Rookie of the Year or not. It has to do with just flat out how long you've been up. Yeah. So if you've been up for a certain amount of time, you're a rookie. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll tell you what, considering the guy is a rookie and has 13 home runs in a month, you know, Pete, Pete Alonzo is going to get rookie of the year, right? I yeah. mean, he's breaking records. He's doing things no rookie's ever done in 80 years. Home run wise. Yeah. Home run wise. Uh, he, 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 he broke the national league rookie home run record. He's still got, Six more to go, I guess. Does he got 46? How many has he got now? Yeah, 42. I 42, think. so he's still got 10 more to go if he wants to try to get to McGuire. Um, so there's a lot to do there. But that 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 dude's going to win the Rookie of the Year at this point in time. So Aristides Aquino, uh, who did just win the International League Rookie of the Year, by the way, just is today. that right? Yeah, just they they announced I, it today. I did not see that with the Louisville Bats um, for what he did with the Bats. So. You know, the guy's unbelievable. He's phenomenal. I can't wait to see this guy next year. I don't care about Rookie of the Year. Let's go for MVP next year. He started squaring his shoulders up the center field, and he started hitting bombs, All right? Sudden, <laughs> hey, he sees the pitcher, man. You got two <laughs> eyes on that guy now. Man. And both eyes on him. <clears throat> so, uh, I, 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 I'm, in, I'm impressed. Uh with the things going on in the MVP race, but I think it's I think it's uh you know, it's a two man race in both leagues. I'm with you. Yep, yep, I'm with you on that. Um, let's move on to what we started a couple of weeks ago. Before, before we get onto that, let's, I have a before. question for you. Yes, please. I am not very good at getting on the face tube, right? Okay. I don't, I don't get on the, let me translate for everybody on the else. Snap face. That is the, uh Facebook. Yeah. So how, what, what happened with the posters? Have we, are we done <laughs> with the poster poll? What's going on? I'm glad you asked. So almost every day, there have been some days that I've forgotten and stuff, but almost every day I've been trying to get a poll posted with our poster tournament. I haven't forgotten about it. Almost every day I cannot get the poll feature on Facebook to show up. We talked about it before. You have to delete the app and bring it back up. Sometimes that works. Sometimes it doesn't. I finally got, so it was I think two days ago, um, I got the first semifinal. So we're down to the final four. I got the first semifinal match posted. Mm -hmm. Biggest upset of the whole thing. It ruins the whole tournament for me. The Bo Jackson poster was my number one. I was going to vote that one over everybody. Upset Central. Michael Jordan defeated the Bo Jackson black and white with the shoulder pads and the bat. With Listen, the, it's, no it's MJ. You throw MJ up there, dude. That's tough. And it's it was a the, bigger it's the free throw line dunk. Do you know a bigger Michael Jordan fan than me? No. I vote. I vote. I think the Bo Jackson poster is cooler than the Michael the, Jordan. That's dunk the greatest poster. picture. I don't. I don't know about. Listen, when I I started, I said picture the Muhammad maybe? Ali. I said the Muhammad Ali. Uh, you know, standing over who was it? Joe Frazier, whoever was standing over. I don't even Four know who it was. Thank you. Uh, no, standing over him is is my favorite of all time. And then you have that's just a great picture, great poster. And then you have the Jordan wingspan, the whatever that is. Is that still in it? Or that yes, be, that's wings, still in it. Wings, wings is, is in is, it. Yes. And you have the Jordan free throw line dunk where he's pictured 
in between the free throw line and the rim in the air, tongue out, you know, the the Michael Jordan dunk. Everybody knows it. Bo Jackson, man, I'm the Bo Jackson with the shoulder pads and the bat and all that. That's a great that's a great poster, but I, I I'm I'm with everybody else. It it falls below those four. Those three. Wow. Okay. Got MJ and two of them. We do have MJ and two of them. And speaking of that, I actually, before the podcast tonight, did get the second Final Four matchup. Get, did get oh, the second get semifinal. On. So right. it's on right now. If you're watching live on Facebook, right now is the time. And you have the next, like, 22 hours or whatever, 21 hours, to get on there oh, and man. vote. It's Wings, wow. the Michael Jordan poster, the panoramic Jordan poster with his wingspan uh, versus the Muhammad Ali poster. It's got nine votes already. Uh, I, I, I'm not uh, – oh, I need to wait and, and look at this and think about it for a while. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. All right, so let's get on to the segment that we have just brought into the Nosebleed Sports Podcast. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, we are going to watch a comedy special every week and uh, just kind of – just kind of discuss it, it. Uh, basically just uh, say what we think what we think about it so the first one was Whitney Cummings can't touch this or something like that can I touch it yeah. can I touch it uh, neither of us were too happy with it you know, Correct. wasn't terrible wasn't good at all but it wasn't terrible then so we decided to go to uh, Mr. Dave Chappelle right Yes. And a big thing we talked about was, you know, political, the the politics getting into comedy. You can, sometimes it gets to be too much. So. Yes. Dave Chappelle. I'm just going to tell you. Dave Chappelle is one of the funniest human beings I've ever seen in my life. That dude can take anything and make it funny. And he killed it in this, like usual. Dave Chappelle, Dave Chappelle was hilarious. I laughed consistently when i watched the whitney Cummings special i never laughed out loud i was sitting by myself watching dave chappelle laughing out loud okay i was excited to hear what you thought about that because i i did the same thing i did the same thing and what's been weird is i watched it uh monday it came out monday on netflix right um and it was since then I've read so much and seen so many posts about people being so upset about that special. Why? And, and I under I, look. I understand. What are they upset about? He covered just about every major social, like the most. What's the word? Just just the most um, hip social topics well, of the day. Just yeah, yeah. <laughs> The most controversial topics, I guess. Sure. And, and he, but he takes stances that are very unpopular. That you're that used to be part of comedy, and then it's not allowed to be anymore. It seems like, and, and that's what it be because people because we're in the we're in the people are calling it cancel culture and all that kind of stuff. But it's it's you know you have to find somebody saying something inappropriate or something that you can reach and read between some lines or whatever and find some some way to call somebody out call out culture is another as another term for it call somebody out for not being just the having the most empathic uh opinion on something and not being 100 percent inclusive no matter what for everybody and everything you have to be politically correct you have to be politically correct dave Chappelle was the opposite of politically correct and, through the entire thing and it was hilarious but he didn't do it in a mean way he didn't well i mean he might have offended some people <laughs> you can but take that's it what mean. that's what com that's co comedians offend people all right it is what it is here's the deal if if you ever watch comedy or any comedians they're gonna offend some people usually the people they're offending are uptight goobers all right so dave Chappelle though take took this special to a whole nother level <laughs> and i laughed so hard at so many different things and not because not some of them were really funny and some of them were just it was almost shocking yeah it was like did he just say that yeah and some of his views weren't what you think that when he starts the joke out it's not what you think he's gonna say he turns Correct. it around i Correct. love it and i it, love and it and he turns it around on himself that's the thing about it is he yes. makes a lot of he made a lot of offensive jokes and a lot and and he knew and that's and he said it like he'll 
preface the the joke or or talk about it after he tells the joke like I know that people are upset with me about this yeah. or I know you know people are going to be mad it, he he talked about uh doing a show and talking about he was talking about rape culture and stuff like yeah. that and and uh, a woman got up and he, the whole me too thing and everything he really he had some very yeah uh some very unpopular opinions about that whole thing and he talked about a woman at a show getting up in the middle of everybody and saying out loud to him as he's on stage um something like it's not my fault i was raped or something as she's walking toward the door <laughs> and he's like <laughs> And he's and look, I don't, I don't know. I even feel weird bringing you're this just, up and laughing about it. But just I'm just saying what he said. He said, he said, "Ma'am, it is not your fault that you were raped, and it's not mine either." <laughs> Ta ta. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> it is. It is what it is. If you if you go to see a comedian, if you go to see a Dave Chappelle, if you go to see, you know, racy not racy's. Uh, I don't want, I don't want to make it sound like racy, like, uh, you know, uh, cultural thing. I, I mean, racy, like, whoo, that was a little sketchy kind of comedy. Then if you, if, if, if you're not ready for that, like if, if you're going to see that, you should be ready for what's about to come out of these dudes mouth or don't go or don't go or don't watch the special. You, you paid money to go watch this dude. You I mean, it's not like he's doing anything different than he ever did in any other special that he's ever done. I mean, he this this is the guy who had the Chappelle show. Come on. I, I feel like in most cases, if you're especially one of the most famous comedians of our time. One hundred percent. But but in, in a lot of cases, if you're going to see a comedian, a specific comedian, you already know about them you probably know a lot of their jokes you at least know or have a good idea about what to expect what kind of jokes to expect he's not jim gaffigan he's not he's not one of these super clean comedians it, 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 he's not and he had never has been exactly to your point you should know what to expect special that i think i've seen even from his early days I, you know i think he said a lot of stuff that was like maybe some of it he didn't even really feel like that was his opinion he was just trying to shock people yeah. and and that's how he was gonna make the best joke he's a joke writer he and that's what he does and that's what he was doing he I, he's not saying things to offend people he's not saying things because he likes to be controversial i don't think maybe he does yeah, a maybe little he does. maybe he does but he is telling jokes to the best of his ability to make people laugh and that's what he's there for. And that's if you're going to a comedy club, look, if you're going to a big theater to see a specific comedian, you probably know about them and you know what to expect. If you go to a, a comedy club where they have a lineup where they have several comedians or something and, and you might know or you might not know or you go to an open mic or something like that. Right. You have to. Th pretty much everything is on the table. Everything at a comedy show. is on the table. Be ready for it. If you don't, if you don't like it, you better get out. Don't go. Yeah, I just don't support comedy if if you're not if you're not prepared to laugh. If you're not prepared to laugh, then don't go to a comedy show. Or if if that's if what they're going to talk about is not funny to you, and and it's not. Maybe it could, people yeah. could have watched this and thought Guaranteed. none of that was funny to me. I'm not even offended, but none of it was funny to me. People can think that comedy. We talked about it last week with my dad here. Comedy is very subjective. It's it. What's funny to somebody is not always funny to somebody else. Dave Chappelle is one of the funniest comedians I've ever seen. I I've liked this guy from the first time I saw him. It was and he's really funny. He, we talked about it last week too, and we've talked about it before. To first, second, third specials, fourth specials, fifth specials. The longer they get, a lot of times they don't get any better. Mm -hmm. Dave Chappelle continues to put out to put out you know, good stuff all the time, I think. Yes. And and listen, it is definitely controversial. All right? Uh, spoiler alert. Yeah, Dave you... Chappelle's going to have a controversial, you know, he's going to say some stuff that some people aren't going to like. It's just going to happen. Spoiler alert. It's very popular on Netflix now, right now. If you have not seen it and you're considering seeing it, turn on Netflix. Expect... It's like the first thing that pops up. Yes, yes. I expect to have your... Uh... Have your 
the word is, but ha- expect to be tested about whether or not you think some pretty messed up stuff is funny or not. Listen, right? here's the deal. This I'm just going to tell you. Dave Chappelle is a Dave Chappelle. Is, the way his comedy comes out, especially in the special, is a is very much a. I don't care what your problem is. Mm-hmm. It's not my problem. Right. So he makes fun of it. All yeah. right. That's how it is. Mm-hmm. People have problems, but it's not his problem. Mm-hmm. And he don't care and because he ta- it's not his problem. Right. And he talks about his problems. He talks yeah. about the plight sure. of whatever he deals with, you sure. know, and, 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 he talks about that stuff too and makes fun of it too and makes fun of himself mm-hmm. and talks about, I mean, he, Really nothing, he doesn't, there's nothing he doesn't cover that I can think of. I mean, he, he he really did tackle all of the major, he talked about abortion, he talked about just about every, I you know, something that I was really interested to hear in this special was he talked about Louis C.K. Yeah. It, because Louis C.K. was one of my favorite comedians for the last 10 years or whatever. Yeah. And was considered by a lot of people maybe the best comedian right now out and then he had the whole thing the the you know sexual misconduct stuff and he was kind of cast out he's been kind of cast out i don't think anybody's working with him right now but he's starting to show back up at clubs and dave Chappelle, you know referenced that and he he was those guys were were good friends right and he kind of talked about that and then he kind of defended louis ck and uh, and he he had a, some really funny stuff to say he about did. that. It, I I never heard the story told quite the way Dave Chappelle told it. <laughs> right. I, I don't. I feel like it was slightly understated, but at the same time, yeah. Uh, you know, listen. Just if you don't mind controversial topics, and you can laugh at at humanity, mm-hmm. and you can laugh at things that are that are pretty bad. Because you you know it, we well, we all know that they're bad things and bad things happen to people. We all know we're not laughing at the at the fact that they happen. It, there there's just certain situations where it's a little bit funnier than other times. I think you have to be able to separate the reality from, from the, the joke. comedy. Yes, yes. separate the reality. That's perfect. If you can't do that, don't watch the special. You're going to hate it. You're going to get on Twitter. You're going to uh, tweet Dave Chappelle, which he doesn't care if you tweet him. By the way, <laughs> you can at that dude all day long. He doesn't care. Uh, so you're going to do that, and you're going to call him every name on, you know, in the book. But if you if you're able to separate it, dude, watch it. It's funny. And look, if you're, and that's what one of the one of the victims he talked a lot about Michael Jackson mm-hmm. and, and the the victims. Yeah, of that's Michael been, Jackson. That's probably been the biggest thing that's come out is the because, Michael Jackson victim. Because one of the victims came out and said, you know, and blasted Netflix for releasing that. Right. You know. And um, so the and, same, and, the same, the same platform that released the Neverland, yeah, the Neverland thing that he was part of, <laughs> right, right. Um, so maybe, maybe talking out of both. Well, I don't know if it's talking out of both sides of his mouth, but but when I saw that, I thought, you know what? I get it. If I was a victim of one of these things that Dave Chappelle talks about and makes fun of, I might think about it totally different. I might not think it's funny. I might be offended. I might be upset. But. I'm not for very fortunately I've been lucky enough to not be a victim of anything like that and and I also feel like I can it's separate so, it is the so reality hard for from you. the comedy. It's so hard for you to to say that you laughed at it. It it, it, so it kind hard. of is cuz it feels weird when you That's, if you watch the thing yeah. and you're like whoa it, it, you know it's going to be a, an internal battle for you too I think. I to, truly believe that if you watch this special, you're gonna sit at home and you're gonna laugh. But you'll, but not you in particular. Right. I'm just saying anybody, anybody listening. But but most people are gonna come out like, ooh, no, nope, nope, that didn't work. Although when you watched it, I bet you chuckled a little bit. I laughed my butt off the whole time. I'm just telling you, I think a lot of people nowadays, the way things are now, everybody's so careful and political, mm-hmm. politically correct when in public. And behind closed doors, it's not always the same. Absolutely. And. Well, you know me. I'm an open book. I don't really care what you think about me. <laughs> right. But a lot of people, a lot no, of people, you care think, very much what people think about you. I do. But you are an open book. Yeah. Uh, I don't mind what people think about me. How about that? So <laughs> I, I can tell you, I laughed at it. It is what it is. But there are going to be some people that watch this laugh like crazy and then turn around and say they hated it because that's just the way this world is right now. Yeah, 
I, I agree with you. I, I can see that. Um, Man, there's some things he said that when he said it, like if you like, it was just oh, it was like oh my gosh, I just laughed at that. But yeah. you know what? You can't help it. It just comes out. He he's a he's a great performer. He delivers jokes phenomenally. He's just that's that's the thing. A, a lot of other a lot of other comedians could have done. They would not have been as funny. It's about close. it's about Dave's cadence and delivery and mm-hmm. all that stuff. I don't want to act like I'm some comedy scientist or anything like that. I, I'm not yeah. a comic. I'm not a comic, but. But you can tell that some of that stuff, you know, <sighs> he's, it, it's it just, good. he's just, yeah, he's very, very good. It was good. One thing that, that struck me, last thing I have for that, I want to go back and watch just to count how many times he walks up and down those two steps. Yeah. I didn't know where he was going. I kept thinking, he, I kept all... thinking he was going to go down into the audience and then he kept running backwards real fast. It, there was this like there was the big stage, and then there were like two steps down onto this smaller stage in right. front that had the big C, the Chappelle Show C right. logo, whatever. And he spent most of his time on that smaller front thing. Right. But then he would say something, and I guess start laughing himself, or just kind of like leave Part it. Part of the leave it, kind of right. like drop That's the that, joke and yes. leave it for a second, and run up the two steps onto the stage, turn around. Start talking about the next thing as he's walking back down the two yep. steps, and it was constant. Yeah. Like that guy walked two miles during the hour <laughs> special. Phenomenal. You know, he lives not far from us. He lives just like right outside of Dayton. I I visited his hometown just like three or four months ago. Where is his hometown? At? Yellow Springs, Yellow Ohio. Springs, yeah. And he still yeah. lives there, from what I he understand. does. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yep. He was just in. He was just in Dayton uh, last weekend, actually for. I forget what it was. Some kind of oh, it was it was some kind of thing for the victims of the Dayton shooting. Oh yeah, he was there. Kanye West was there. Chris Rock was there. Just in Dayton, forty five minutes up the road from oh, us. That crazy. That was so cool. Kanye West. Anyway, Kanye West did his uh, Sunday service in. Dayton. Oh, did he in, t- yeah. in Dayton? He wow. Did it. So was Kim here and everybody? Kim was here. Kim they was here. they went. Yeah. To, I just saw something. I don't. I can't. They went to King's Island. I'm talking about those people. But no, I love the Kardashians. They you don't were, like the Kardashians? I can't stand them. I can't oh, stand, I love Con- the can't stand Kanye. West. Listen, if I could find a way, <laughs> if I could find a way to get on TV and just have people pay me, oh sure. Talk, look, hey, big ups to them. Way to go, girls. I mean, when people say that they're not talented and they listen, they got some kind. If of, they make people watch them, they are entertainers they were just born, like anybody else. They were born with talent because they were born. They have nothing to do with how they look. If they didn't look like that, they would be the worst show on TV. They wouldn't they have, even have everything a show. to do with how they look because they're all as fake as can be, right? I mean, they all have had all kinds of work done. Oh, sure. I think they were all like beautiful people. Their whole family were okay. beautiful sure. people to begin with, and I'm sure they've all had work done. I can't I believe again that I'm talking them. about them. I love them. But anyway, they were in, and apparently they were spotted two days in a row. At a cheesecake factory. Nice. There you go. Well, I, apparently, I think what in up, Dayton is where, where it was. Where, where else are you going to eat when you're in Dayton if you're rich? I mean, that's basically <laughs> yeah, the richest no. restaurant in Dayton. Isn't it? <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Probably. Oh, goodness. Anyway, right, so, so we got to pick a – we have to, we pick, need to a, pick a special. A, a special. Look, I've picked the last two specials. I have one in mind that I would do like it, to do, you're gonna but I want to leave it. it up to you. I have not looked to see okay. what's out there. So listen. It doesn't have to be brand new. It can be old. It can be new. It can sure. be whatever. Before I say that, Neil Brennan. Have you ever seen this dude, Neil Brennan? I love Brennan? Neil Brennan. All right, so co-creator Neil, of the Chappelle Show. Exactly. I had no idea he oh, was yeah. co-creator of the Chappelle Show, and uh, I heard him in an interview. And him and Dave Chappelle are like as tight as anybody can be. They were well, were a little sure. falling out after he left but, Chappelle Show. But, but they've but. talked. They're back, and they talk. They're friends. They're, they're friends again. Neil Brennan's a funny dude too. He's very funny. Yeah, I, uh, I I just I just had it pulled up and I was trying to remember what that guy's name was and uh, he's a different kind of comedian and he can mm-hmm. for a guy that looks like a huge dork he's <laughs> he he gets pretty yeah out there too. He's, he's got some blue material. Yeah, um, blue. Okay. I like that so, blue so, material. So so. <laughs> The one that I was thinking about, you have Amazon Prime, correct? I do. Yes. So you have Prime Video. Yep. Okay. Uh, a prime, a, a prime video specific new release, newly released special that I'm interested in watching. Jim Gaffigan. 
Okay. Jim Gaffigan has a new special on there, um, and that was the one I had in mind. But last week you talked about at some point we've got to do Eddie Murphy Delirious, right? Right, because it's on Netflix right now. Right. So it'll be on I'll for tell a you while. What, yeah. For uh, between those two, I'll let you pick. I'll do, we'll do Gaffigan. Let's do Jim Gaffigan. We'll we'll do Eddie Murphy in two weeks. Okay. All right, Jim so Gaffigan, Jim Eddie Gaffigan Murphy next this week, yeah. Eddie, Eddie Murphy after that. So we'll we'll go with Jim Gaffigan, who is uh, his jokes will all be about his kids. They will all be about being a dad and going to soccer games and stuff like that and food and food and but he's he's also good because his delivery is good. Yes, he's that he's big on that and he's an odd looking fellow. I mean, you know, he's got the dad bod, so he does. He he has, he and he makes fun of the way he looks all the time, and and uh, so that that's set up perfectly for him. Um, I've I've I love Jim Gaffigan, and he's a cleaner comedian, and it's uh, you know, and that dirtiness of the comedy has always been funny. Robin Williams, helps, yeah. uh, I mean, just go back through all the, all the greats; they're all pretty dirty cats. I mean. Uh, they they all they all drop a lot of bombs. Yeah, if you yep. will, and talk about a lot of different things. Yeah, but Jim Gaffigan is a cleaner comic, and I, he's one of. I mean, he's he's been one of my favorites for a while, and and he's one of the comedians that I've gotten to see live. That was really oh, cool. Yeah. I got to see Jim Gaffigan live. So quality um, time. So I mean, that just tells you right. Quality there. time. It's yes, called the quality name of the. Time. Yes, I mean, it just tells you how. Yes, I didn't say that. Yeah. How how. Uh, calm in quality it is <laughs> yeah uh, so okay i'm excited about that we'll All talk right. about jim gaffigan quality is, so if you want to uh join us watch jim gaffigan quality time we'll uh it's on prime video we'll uh we'll we'll, we'll talk about it a little bit at the end of next week's podcast absolutely it's going to be the the last segment of every podcast, probably, right? Probably, yeah. We'll go into the until we transition first. all the way to just the comedy, just, just the comedy, comedy podcast. It's the, it's the <laughs> nosebleeds comedy, nosebleeds <laughs> comedy podcast. We'll just we'll eventually just become the nosebleeds and just talk about whatever the heck comes up. I think that's more fun anyway. <clears throat> we kind of do that anyway, uh, but uh, no, sports is what we do. Well, mostly, mostly. All right, so that sounds good, Jim Gaffigan. It is okay. Everybody, everybody, watch Jim Gaffigan so that you can contribute your comments on the special on Facebook next week. I got an issue with Facebook right now. This is week two. I can't see the you comments. Can't bring it up. I can't. I can't see the comments as I go to Facebook Live and watch us doing this podcast. There's comments out there, and I can't see any of them. There's seven comments out there right now since we've been doing this. Nothing. So I'm a little upset. Uh, so. What's that guy's name? Mark Wahlberg. No. Shame on you, no, Mark, Mark Wahlberg. Mark, uh, what's that dude's name? Uh, Marky guy, Mark. No, the guy who owns Facebook. They're used to invent. <laughs> oh, or whatever. yeah, yeah, yeah. What's his name? Uh, Zuckerberg. Mark Zuckerberg. I yeah. know you watched the podcast. We we've seen your comments on here before. I'm sure you're watching now. I would tell you if you are, but I can't see who's watching or anything. Can you fix that for me? Yes. If anybody knows, Mr. Zuckerberg specifically, please. Please fix our podcast. <laughs> just go to the top, man. Right? Just go to the top. Uh, so Facebook Live, I need to be able to see comments. I can't see them uh, on the iPad. Fix that for me, and I'd be happy so I can communicate with people watching. Uh, on that note, you got anything uh, else Sonny Liston. On? Thank you, Andre. Uh, Sonny Liston. Good yeah. call, Andre. Yep. It was. I, I want to say 1965, I believe. Um, Bobby Edwards commented a uh, 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 on our interview with Andre, he enjoyed it. Thank you, Bob, for listening again. Thank Joe, you, Andre. Joe Leonard is on, and this is very important. And and by the way, Joe Leonard mentioned Gabriel Iglesias for the second week in a row, so we might have to do a Gabriel Iglesias. You know Iglesias. why he? You know why he mentioned Gabriel Iglesias? Why is that? Because he looks just like him. <laughs> I'm just kidding. No. I'm just kidding, Joe. I love. I'm that. pretty sure I did watch Fluffy. I'm pretty sure I did watch that I've special. Seen, a long I've time seen ago. two of his specials. I think I've seen at least one, yeah. yeah. Uh, but may, but maybe we'll do that too. But specifically, uh, I wanted to thank Joe because there was a week that I was out. You had Joe on, and you guys talked about soccer. That's right. That week, from that from that week, we got tickets to an FC Cincinnati game from Joe. We also got Ref Edge Pro, a can of Ref Edge Pro all from, kinds from of, Johnny yeah, all Briggs. All kinds of stuff from that. Maybe we, maybe I need to start we need to start having Joe on more talk more soccer. I mean, we're going to we're just going to transition solely. We're going to talk first 45 minutes comedy, second 45 minutes soccer. That's all. There you go. Um no, 
that's never going to happen. But <laughs> let me tell you, I just wanted to say really quickly, thank you, thank you, thank you to Joe and Trisha for uh, for giving us the uh, the tickets to the FC Cincinnati game. It was my first game. I got a chance to use them. You had family obligations. Unfortunately, you couldn't go. Um, but I the went. The most important was that you finally went to a game. I went to my very first soccer game, my first professional soccer game, and um, I'll tell you, it was uh, it, it was. It was an experience, you know. It was it was cool. They had great seats, by the way. Um, and I mean, the 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 coolest part to me was seeing uh, John Brig and his and Johnny Brig. Oh, did you saw them both there? That was that was fun. Um, so I got to talk to them for a couple minutes. But um, it was this the game itself was was pretty good. It was it was pretty fun to watch. They lost, but um, you know you you. you you get to follow in the ball, and mm-hmm. once you know when a guy gets a little breakaway, you hear the crowd start to pick up, and it's yeah. you know it's exciting. And um, did you get bored at any point in time? Toward the end of the game, it was getting harder to stay engaged. Yeah, and part of that was because they scored a couple times in the last couple minutes too, and it was I think it was four one or five one I think. Um, so the energy was already out of the crowd. It was kind of out, and each time you know as the minutes ticked by, more people got up. As they scored again, as New York scored again, way more people got up. Yep. You know, so but I stayed for the entire thing. Wanted to make sure I got the full experience, and uh, it was fun. It was it was fun. I enjoyed it. I, I'm glad I I'm glad I had that experience. Um, I, I I didn't become like a uh I'm I'm not like in love with soccer now. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna um. I'm not going to what do you say disown basketball or anything sure, and sure. bring in soccer as my favorite sport or anything like that. But I did appreciate. I, I tell you, every time I watch a soccer game, even just on TV and especially in person, I have so much respect and admiration for the conditioning that those guys oh, for the condition those guys are in. Yeah, I just can't imagine running for 90 minutes and it's just it's it's impressive. It's it is impressive, and I, it's a more physical sport than. Then I I think I at least I thought well, it was. Well, see, now that's one thing I always knew that it was. I mean, people don't talk about soccer enough. I mean, you get beat up in soccer. I mean, it's it was I mean, a you little, don't have pads on or nothing. I mean, yeah. you're hurt. I mean, they're they get on each other. They get each other. It was a little confusing sometimes because they would they would call they would call it if you know if there was a little physicality, and then at other times I feel like there was like the guys were like grabbing and holding and pulling and pushing and shoving we and need to get somebody on the podcast again to talk about that because i think a lot of that has to do with where your feet are and okay exactly there, what you do yeah. and stuff and where the ball is and all that stuff okay and there were a lot of rules about soccer that i still don't know honestly i still don't know all the positions which is pretty pathetic at 37 but i've just never been it's not our thing that right? engaged into soccer um but so, again, I appreciate it we as gotta, a sport. We got to get we get, maybe we 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 had Joe Joe Leonard on once. He really got did got deep in in indulged indulged. He got it, deep it, something it, into uh, into into soccer with us. Maybe uh, we know do we got another fan of the podcast, uh, Johnny Brig, mm-hmm. little Johnny. Maybe we get him on here one yeah. day. He, he's a soccer referee. He can yeah. kind of help us out with some rules. That's a great idea. Yeah, he's a, who who knows the rules better than our soccer referee. I think, yeah, he, I think he would be the guy. I think he would be the guy. At some point, we are going to talk soccer again, and we're having Johnny on. That sounds good. All right, all right. Anything else you want to go over before we get out of here today? Thank you again to Andre at Andre Edwards O uh, six. Great follow Bengals uh, locked on Bengals dot com. Um, I don't know that there's been a lot put on the website yet this year. Uh, they've been focusing quite a bit on on the podcast side of that. but uh, So check that podcast out. Check the out. podcast out for sure. Um, but Andre Edwards, great follow on Twitter. Check him out. Bengals Insider for the Nosebleed Sports Podcast. And he was nice enough to stay on Facebook and watch the rest of this thing. So that's yeah. awesome. We appreciate that, brother. Thank you very much. We appreciate everybody who, who tunes in, watches on Facebook, and then listens yeah, listens after that. Listens afterwards because on Thursday morning we're not just on Facebook Live. Correct. We're also on you know the SoundCloud and iTunes and Spotify and TuneIn and uh, Apple Radio Podcast. This, that, and the other. Every platform there is YouTube, uh, iHeartRadio. Did I say that already? Check them all out. 
subscribe but please get on and subscribe send us some comments if you think we're goofballs or you don't you don't like us i don't care comment say something yeah i'd love to talk back to you we just so, want feedback yeah just give us some feedback so uh check us out as always wednesdays 10 30 live on facebook thursday mornings afterwards on all your favorite platforms adam schmidt it's been fun it has been fun thanks again episode. thanks again to andre edwards and don't forget to turn your headlights on